Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Mike here from Filter Grid, and today I'm going to be doing a quick video on how I edit my travel photos with Capture One Pro. So for this tutorial, I'm using a couple of photos from San Diego I got on a trip earlier this year. I'm just going to show you a bunch of the steps I take uh, when I first import them, how I make sure you know the details are correct with the uh, lens corrections, and then just some color grading and light adjustments that I'll make. So just a, kind of a quick overview, give you some, uh, some experience looking at the program. Uh, if you're someone who's looking at maybe trying out Capture One or looking to learn more about it. And then um, I'll just show you a few other things, uh, little quick tricks that you might not have already known just to you know, save some time in your workflow. Uh, so to get started, I'm gonna just use this first photo of the coast. And the first thing I always do is you know, crop it, fix the horizon line. So I'm not super amazing with cropping in Capture One. It's something I don't love, um, especially the rotation. But I did find one little trick that helped me quite a bit and that is to right click when you have the rotating or the straighten tool they call it so right click and then you can actually adjust it um, a little more precisely um, so once you figure out i want to adjust it more to the, that direction and so um, i'm just going to reset it real quick to get a quick look again but as you can see it kind of curt it kind of like leans mm -hmm. upwards this way so i'm going to just turn it down so I'm gonna do a little negative 0.4. Let's see how that looks. I think that's good. Okay, and so now that the cropping's done, you know, I think that's good. I'm gonna move on and make sure that the lens correction is accurate. And so usually uh, Capture One will just figure out your camera profile, but if it doesn't, you can click show all. If it doesn't show, show recommended, just click show all and click it again and you can find you know, your exact camera profile to make sure that you don't have any aberrations, distortion from your lens, stuff like that. And so once that's on, you know, that's all I do there. And then I'll usually, I'm not going to go to color first, I usually go to the um, exposure first, which is just this tab that kind of looks like a curve. And I'll start with the white balance. I don't really adjust white balance. Typically, I just, you know, as shot. Exposure itself, I'm gonna bump up a little bit for this photo and just brighten it a little bit. And the contrast as well. Brightness, I'll turn down. And then the saturation, turn up. I like to bring out the colors a lot. Um, highlights, turn them down. Shadows, bring them up just a bit to about 17. Bring out, you know, some of the details in the coast here so you can actually see it. And then I'm not going to adjust the whites and the blacks and the HDR and then levels I don't play with too much. Um, I'll just jump into curves next. Just make kind of an elongated S here, just like a typical curve shape. And um, bring out a little more color. <clears throat> and then sometimes another good thing to do is bring up the clarity. Uh, for this photo, if you zoom all the way in, it's not perfectly in focus. It's got a little bit of a, I don't know if it's the lens or the, you know, the, the camera was shaking a little, but it's not perfect. So I'm just going to turn the clarity up a little more, kind of try to fix the details and then nothing on the vignette. And so we're good on the exposure for this one. I think it looks, you know, well lit. You can see more details. And then the last thing I'll do is play around with the, uh, the colors. So. White balance again, leaving that. Color editor. For this photo, I'm not really gonna play with it, but it, sometimes you can get some really cool effects just adjusting the hue, you know? And you could also do it for every individual color, just like in Lightroom, very similar. Um, so if you wanna play around with, you know, anything in your photo, whether it's the greens, the reds, the, you know, if you wanna make the ocean look different, you can do, you know, the blues. Uh, there we go, I think that kinda cat captures it. So you can see you can do all that. I'm not really into those kind of edits. So I'm just going to play around with um, the color balance. And you have a bunch of options here. The master controls everything at once if you just want to get one big bold color. Um, and quick tip is if you ever, you know, have it out there and you don't want to reset the whole thing, you can just double tap and it will reset the circle. And so that'll come in handy on the next one, three-way, because you'll have, you know, these all out separated, and then you might want 
reset one of them at a time. You just double click and it goes back to the center. And so for this edit, I'm gonna play around with the midtones a little bit to bring out some of that gold in the coast. And then I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring a little bit of pink to the highlights. And then for the shadows, I wanna also make them kind of a darker bluish color. And so that's kind of got the colors down. <clears throat> and now seeing the way the colors are affected by that, I wanna go back to the light and just bring it up a little bit. Just bring out a few more details in the shadows and then reduce the highlights a little more. And I feel like we've got, you know, a really different edit from the start. I'm also gonna adjust this just a bit more really fix that um, horizon line and I think it looks good now and so that's kind of the end of the edit so then the last thing you do is just file export I always click variant to make sure it's like the finished edit and then you just navigate to the folder you want and once you do you just click export and you're done and so let me jump into a few more edits to just show you uh, some other things that you might come across um, with the capture one editing, you know, it's a little different than some of the other programs and you might not know where everything is. So for this one, I want to make it kind of retro, have like a film and, uh, you know, noisy effect. And so to start, I'm going to go ahead to the lighting again where I'm at and I'm just going to, you know, play with the light a little bit, turn the contrast up again, brightness down, highlights down and exposure up just a tad and then shadows up a little bit. and. For the curve this time, I'm going to make it a little more bold. And so when you pull this last one up after you've already made two points, you kind of add that, you know, faded look to the shadows, like it's called the matte effect sometimes. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm just going to reduce it a little bit because it's too dark. And then you can pull this bottom one up and down to kind of adjust how dark the shadows are. I kind of like them a little bit lighter. And then. I'm going to go to the colors next and play with some of those shadows again, you know, let's see what colors we can bring into those faded shadows. So I think the, the green does look cool, but I think the yellow or the purple, like pink looks even cooler. So I'm going to leave it there. The highlights I'm going to reset. I like those playing. And then for the midtones, a little more red there. And so that's looking pretty good. Uh, I also want to adjust the horizon line again. I'm going to reduce it by about 0.2. I think that looks good. Um, yeah, and so now for, to finish this up, I wanna play with the noise. And so that's in the details area. If you go to film grain, and you have a lot of choices here, all kinds of uh, grain. The tabular grain is really cool. It's like kind of big and bulky. And so if I turn that off, you can see it. And once you turn it up and zoom in, you can see exactly you know how intense and what it looks like. So. I'll go through them a little bit. So you got harsh grain, tabular, cubic, soft, silver, and then fine. And fine grain is like ultra fine, which I think it looks pretty cool, honestly. It's not as easy to see when you're zoomed out, but if you just want a really like simple noise, it's a great one to use. And that's all the way turned out, by the way, almost. So if it's like down, you really can barely tell it's there. Um, I'm gonna go with soft grain. I'm gonna turn it down to about 50. Or, oh, let's go to 47. And so that looks pretty cool. And then that kind of completes the edit. You know, everything's good. If you wanted to remove some spots or you, you wanted to add more, you can do that in the details tab as well. Um, you can also adjust like the sharpening. For this, I think it's pretty good. Um, and then you can do a more pattern too, but that's not something I typically play with. And so. That kind of completes that edit. Um, let's jump in and do one more here. So for this edit, I want to try something different. I want to try to create a duo tone effect. Um, and to do that, you can go to the color tab again and then go to the black and white and click enable black and white. And so that'll instantly make your image black and white. And then you can adjust the split tones. And so for the hue, let's get a nice green or golden green in there. Time for to bring it down a little bit. And then for the shadows, it's already at the red. Um, let's see what else we can do though. I think that blue looks kind of cool. It's like a dark purple blue. 
And so for this edit, it's pretty simple. You don't really have to do much from here, but I'm just gonna fix the horizon line once again. And I'm also going to play with the flight some more. Really make it faded, you know? Just like a cool faded vintage edit. Almost looks like a film film scan and then just mess around with the grain again. Let's see how the tabular grain looks. All the way up. Perfect. So I think that completes it. Uh, I think the grain's a little bit heavy. Let's turn it down. And there we go. And there's the final edit from the set. I hope this tutorial helped you out. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'm thinking about making a more sort of comprehensive video about Capture One. If you want to see a lot more of the tools, the way to work, you know, different techniques, you know, ways you can see all the photos at once, just sort of anything. So let me know in the comments below and I appreciate you watching this video. Thanks.